Good morning, everyone. Um, hi, yeah, my name is Brian Taylor Van. I'm a software engineer at Google on the Lit team, and I help maintain the Lit Labs React package. And today we're going to go into a little more detail about the Lit Labs React package because it's definitely a little more special than the rest of the wrappers. Um, so this will be a continuation of what Kev was discussing. And let's get started. We're going to talk about some developer stories. We're going to talk about why we built this package. Um, we're going to talk about the package itself and how it works. We're going to show an example, and then we're going to talk about a few things we're trying to work on in the future. So when this package was created, we had two developers in mind. Um, one was going to be the web component developer. They make a bunch of beautiful web components. They want to extend the reach of those web components as far as possible, different frameworks. They don't want to be limited by frameworks or other JavaScript libraries. Uh, the second developer would be the React developer. Um, they're used to developing in a React environment. They deal with components when they build, build applications. And this React developer in particular might have found a web component that covers all the use cases. And they don't want to recreate that web component in React. They just want to use it because they're rendering to the DOM. But they also want to be able to develop and maintain their applications in a familiar and comfortable environment so they can keep up their velocity. And that means treating web components as a first class experience. And what that means is, we want to be able to give both the web component developer and the React developer the ability to <laughs> share the web components <laughs> and use them in React. Currently, what that means is React has some difficulties discerning differences between attributes and properties. Um, our web component wrapper will interrogate a web component for properties and then set them as properties, not attributes, when React updates properties. Um, events are also uh, a little bit difficult. Currently, React does not handle attaching event listeners to web components in the same way that it handles vanilla DOM elements. Um, the same thing goes for custom elements. And when you have prop like when you have trouble with uh, properties, attributes, events, you're probably going to have trouble with types too. Um, in the experimental version of React right now, events are attached to the web component, um, but they still have problems with arbitrary events and typing as well. Some of the main differences between web components and React components are ergonomic. So for the most part, you can pretty much discern the differences between camel case and kebab case. In web components, your tag name might be my dash component, while in JSX, it's a camel case, my component. Same thing with events. And also in this package, you're able to <laughs> choose a package that's not just React. You can also use Preact or other type of JSX module renders. Um, so let's talk about the Lit Labs React package itself, though. Like I said previously, the wrapper interrogates a web component to find out what properties are attached to web component. And then when the React props are set on that web component, they are set on the element as properties, not attributes. And this solves a lot of challenges when it comes to using web components in React. The second big feature that we do is we actually provide the ability to map React property event names to custom element event listeners. So in this example, we have an on foo listener that will be called every time the foo event is dispatched from a web component. And then of course, we like to make sure that our properties, attributes, and events are well typed. And this is an example of how the syntax looks when using this wrapper. So Kevin mentioned how the wrapper sort of automatically automatically generates properties, but that's based on interrogating and analyzing the web component itself. This is a more manual uh, way of doing this, where you can provide a React module, you can provide the element class, you can provide a tag name, and an event map. And this create component function will then generate a wrapped web component that works just fine in React. So let's take a look at this in action. So here we have a web component called super button, right? It extends lit element. It's got a property called name. And every time a user clicks on the web component button, the onclick method is executed. A custom event is dispatched. And it has data that is derived from the property on the web component called this.name. If we go over to our React app, we can see that we're just using a vanilla web component out of the box. Super button, we've provided a name called Taylor. We've provided an event listener for on message. But when we go over and use our web component, nothing happens. 
this is kind of expected. And this is where the create component function really shines in our lit labs react package. So let's go ahead and import that. And we'll also import a typing uh, to help us with our events. We're going to import the web component class itself. And then we're going to call create component. Here's where we're going to provide a few arguments to create component, including the React module, a tag name, the web component class itself. And then we're also going to provide the mapping for our on message event listener. This is going to tie everything back into the React app. And we're going to use our camel case instead of kebab case. And now we have access to both the event listeners and state inside the web component. And this is kind of the relationship that we want to provide for web components in React, the ability to drill properties down and the ability to listen to events that come from the web component. And that way we have access to state on the web component in React. And you get a chance to reconcile component state with React state. <laughs> Sweet. There's a couple more examples. This one was pretty basic. And this is the base case that we want to provide as like usability for this, this package. If you go to lit.dev slash playground, you'll see other examples that show you how to use React events, custom events, how to use slots with web components in React, and how to use refs, which is really important when you're trying to reconcile web component state and with React state. In the future, we have a couple of plans for the React package. Kevin did mention that we have a few features uh, uh, coming out. Mainly, I know people are going to wonder, is this compatible with Next.js? And the short answer is, we're working on it. Next.js and other SSR frameworks are a forefront in modern web development. And currently, we're researching best practices. Another <laughs> web component developer story might be, hey, I developed dozens of web components, and doing this manually each time feels kind of cumbersome and a little heavy. And we understand that. And that's exactly why Kevin and the team are working on the CLI tool to automatically generate uh, uh, wrapped web components for any framework, including React. And that's the end of this talk. It was pretty quick. We went over. One of the details of the wrapper package is called Lit Labs React. We discussed the intentions of the package. We discussed who we're developing it for, and we discussed how to use it. Hopefully, this helps unlock <laughs> uh, the power of web components in your React app. And thank you very much for your time today.